Um, let's start with an interesting fact. You give me a dirty diaper of a six-month-old, and I can tell you whether he or she were born by C-section or by vaginal delivery. Amazing, right? How do I do that? My kids think I'm a magician. Please, let's not burst their bubble quite yet. But I'm actually a computational biologist. What does that mean? That means I'm using computer science and math tools to study biological questions. And specifically, my lab studies the infant gut microbiome. Infants, I'm sure many of you have seen before. Gut, you also know. Microbiome, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of, is the collection of microorganisms, mostly bacteria, living in and on our bodies. Now, people study microbiomes in our bodies in various locations. There's a whole study about the skin microbiome and the vaginal microbiome and the mouth microbiome. Specifically, we're focusing on the gut for a few reasons. One is that it's the largest community of bacteria. We have trillions and trillions of bacteria in our gut. Second of all is that it's the most diverse community of bacteria, and so it also plays a very important role in educating the immune system, how to separate between self and non-self. And thirdly, there's a one way of collecting samples from the gut that is relatively simple, simple, and that is we take stool samples, and the stool samples are kind of like proxy to what we actually have within our gut. Specifically, we chose to, um, I chose to work on the infants because I think the question of how does this community establish, how does it all start, is fascinating. Another reason I chose to focus on infants is myself, we have three kids, and when I made that choice, I was already changing so many diapers, I thought I might as well make a career out of it. <laughs> so what is it that we do? The lab studies, we have three main topics. We look at establishment, how does this community start? We look at the development of the infant gut microbiome. How does it change in the first, let's say, year of life? And lastly, we talk about what's the impact. What is it, how does it, is it important at all for human health or for pediatric health? So let's start with the establishment. The first question, again, that we want to start is to start and ask, and how does it all begin? How does this community is establishing? So when I had kids, I was thinking to myself, you know, do they start getting bacteria in my uterus while I'm pregnant? Does it really start at birth? Or maybe it all starts as they eat all kinds of sand in the sandbox. We really don't quite understand all these differences. We definitely understand that delivery, their birth, is the first very substantial event, as, you, as I told you before, because we see such a strong signature even at six months of age. So how do we really study it further? So I just came back from a postdoctoral training at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard, and there, together with an OBGYN at Massachusetts General Hospital, MGH, um, we've started a new cohort, which means we've collected samples for plenty of family, 190. And what we did is we collected stool samples from the babies every day they were at the hospital. Now, we wanted to also understand where are these bacteria coming from? What's that source of these bacteria? And so to do that, we looked at the mom, and we collected all kinds of samples from the mom, and we want to compare this, the bacteria that we find in the mom, the good bacteria that we find in the mom, and those that were transmitted to the child. Now, to all the dads in the audience, we definitely think you're important, and you're critical for the process, we can all agree, but when we focus on delivery per se, we think you play somewhat of a lesser role, no offense. <laughs> And so we're looking at mom and their babies, and we're comparing these. And the, the way that we do that is that we extract all DNA from our sample, whether it's a swab on the skin or if it's a stool sample, and we sequence at everything. We get lots and lots of DNA sequences. These are bacterial DNA sequences. And from the minute we get these sequences, this really becomes a computer science question. We get files with millions and millions of rows. Each row is a text, you know, some word of length 100 letters. And we're trying to understand which bacteria were present in those samples and what kind of function they could do. So this is basically the computational side of the lab, is building all these algorithms that take into account a lot of sequences and then understanding which bacteria were actually there and actually figuring out if this is the exact, exact same strain of bacteria that we see in the child and so we can conclude that it transferred from the mom to the child. So that was establishment. The second question is development. So what happens after delivery? The second most influential factor affecting the bacteria in the guts of infants is their early life diet, namely whether they were breastfed or they were formula fed. Now, why is, that making, why is that playing such an important role? The reason for that is that the third most um, common compound found in breast milk is a certain type of sugars called human milk oligosaccharides. These are complex sugars, not like glucose and fructose like we all know. 
And the, the interesting part is that babies cannot digest these sugars. So one would think, why would the mom, you know, quote unquote, put so much effort into adding these long sugars into the milk if the babies cannot digest them at all? And what was realized is that basically the mom is feeding the bacteria in the gut of her children which is, again, a really nice concept. And so we have plenty of these sugars. There are between 50 and 200 types of these sugars. And what we're trying to understand is whether the composition of the milk is actually affecting the composition of the gut bacteria. So that is something that we're looking into. And the reason that this is important is, as you can all imagine, the whole idea about infant formula is that we want to mimic what we see in breast milk. And so until three months ago, I could come and say, there is no infant formula that has any of these complex sugars. But Similac and Materna kind of ruined that line for me. So there is now a certain formula that has one of these sugars. But what we want to really understand is, what is the minimal set of sugars that would best mimic breast milk if we would add that to formula? So that was the development. The third part, which I think is probably the most important, the most impactful, is why should you all care? Why does it matter? I hope I convince you that it's interesting, that delivery mode matters and that breastfeeding matters, but does it really have any influence on our life? And so I'm sure many of you, I definitely know a lot of people that were born by C-section, were never breastfed, and are super healthy, right? They don't have any problems with that respect. However, we do see that epidemiologically speaking, um, people who are born by C-section have a higher rate, for example, of autoimmune diseases. And we're wondering if that is mediated through some kind of um, differences in the microbiome in early life and potentially affecting their immune system. So we're looking into the impact, again, in a few different topics. The first is that we're looking at premature infants in the NICU, in the neonatal intensive care unit. And what we're looking at there is um, two things, I think, for now. One is that we're looking at antibiotic resistance genes. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of it already. The whole idea is that we have more and more resistant bacteria. And what happens is that we see that kids that were born prematurely have more of these resistant bacteria. And we're wondering whether these were transmitted from the mom at delivery. And the reason we think that, because oftentimes the mom was hospitalized prior to delivering those cases, and we wonder whether she picked up some of those resistance and passed it on. So what we're doing now, we're collecting samples from the mom and samples from the baby, and we're not just asking, is this the same resistance? We're really going deep and looking, is this the exact same gene with the exact same variation that we see in the mom come up again in the child? And if that's the case, can we look, find some kind of interventions that would perhaps diminish some of that transmission? The other question that we're looking into is if we look at breast milk in the NICU, again, with premature infants, and we want to see how this breast milk is changing over time. What is the immune effect of this breast milk? And so what we're going to do is we're collecting paired samples of breast milk from the mom and infant stool samples in the days that they're in the NICU, and we're trying to see if indeed the composition of the milk, both in terms of sugars and in antibodies, how is that affecting the infant gut? Two other aspects that we're going to tell about quickly is one is that we're looking at allergies. So if you want to think about autoimmune um, diseases or disorders that you find in infancy, one of them is allergy. And specifically, we're focusing on infant um, allergy to cow's milk protein, right? So it's not the uh, lactose intolerance, but it's rather the allergic reaction to whey and casein, which are the, the milk proteins. And again, we have a cohort of infants. We have 200 infants. 100 that developed this allergy and 100 that haven't developed this allergy. And we've collected samples before, during, and after the allergy, and we're trying to compare. And to ask whether we can identify anything on their microbiome space that would indicate whether they will or will not develop this allergy. And if so, can we intervene again early on? I'm going to end with the last topic of impact, and that is when we think about inflammatory bowel diseases, or IBD, namely Crohn's and ulcerative colitis. And so these are the diseases that were the first to be identified with a relation to the microbiome, especially to the gut. And that makes a lot of sense because, A, it's an inflammatory disease of the gut, so hence the proximity to the gut microbiome. But second of all, because it's an autoimmune disease, and so we see how that plays a role as well. And so what we're asking, we're focusing on the transmission of bacteria from mom to child. We want to know what happens if the mom is also an IBD patient. So we're looking at, at pregnant women who are IBD patients, and we're trying to see whether some of those harmful bacteria, quote unquote, 
that are associated with IBD are transmitted to the child at early age. And if that's the case, again, how can we intervene and try and help that to be to a lesser degree? So I think these are, these are roughly the things that we're studying in the lab, and I think a lot of us can agree by now that we can think of the microbiome kind of like a new organ. It is playing a role in a lot of different fronts. You can think of it especially in terms of personalized medicine, because you can see that different people, even though they have relatively the same genetics in terms of that specific disease and that specific medication, would react still differently to the same drug. And one reason for that is that their gut microbes can play a role in breaking down that uh, medicine, kind of like they're breaking down the sugar from breast milk. Okay? Lastly, I want to end by saying that I feel that there's a really unique aspect to the Hebrew University in this multidisciplinary research. I'm standing here with joint affiliation. I have an experimental lab in the medical faculty, and I also have an affiliation at the computer science school in the Safra campus. So I have a computational branch, and I have an experimental branch. And I think the combination is really what enables a lot of this. So the Hebrew University has a lot of multidisciplinary programs. I specifically, personally, graduated from the computer science and computational biology program a few years ago. Um, and I think that was a wonderful program. And now I'm delighted to play a role in the new program of the medical um, computational, computational medicine program, where again, the whole idea is to bring together physicians and researchers and computer science all under the same roof, roof to really enable this innovative studies that you're hearing about today. Thank you all very much for your support and enabling this cutting edge research. <laughs>